Good morning, good morning, good morning, new creation and Facebook family. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to do what? We're going to rejoice and, and be, be glad, glad in it. it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome you guys to our service today. Uh, we want this to be an interactive uh, service. So we're going to ask that you comment um, and you do whatever it is you need to do to be a part of the service today. Amen? Amen. So that means if you need to break out in a praise break in your living room, then break out in a praise break. Okay. If you need to shout amen, then you shout amen. You can drop us a comment as well. We want to hear from you. Uh, we also want you to share. Start your own streaming party. Share this video. We don't just want to bless. I want you to be blessed. We want everyone to be blessed. Amen. 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 So we're going to just say a quick prayer and then we're going to open up and worship. So I want to hear all of your voices through the airways. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this uh, day. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity, God, to uh, open our eyes and another opportunity to give you the glory and honor and praise that is due to you, Father God. So we ask that you just have your way in uh, this service today, Father God. We want to reach somebody, Father. We want someone to leave this service, although online, with a different perspective, with a renewed understanding, with a renewed spirit, with a renewed faith, Father God. So we ask that you do only what you can do, Father God. Decrease us and increase you within us father god so that when they hear our voices when they hear our words when they hear the sound all they hear is you in your mighty son jesus name we pray amen amen every praise is to our god every word of worship with one accord every praise every praise is to our god Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is due our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God.
you open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Why do you turn into wine? You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. There's none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand against? Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God. Our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Hallelujah. Our God is greater. He is stronger. Amen. The song says, if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Amen. <clears throat> that means that we can overcome anything. Hallelujah. We can make it through anything, no matter what may come our way. Hallelujah. If our God is for us, nothing can stand against us. Amen. 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 <clears throat> There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing you love, hearing you love. So set a fire down in my soul. 
soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more, more of you. Pour it out. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more, more of you. Pour it out. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more, more of you. Pour it out. I want more, I want more. I want more, I want more. I want more. that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be. There's no place I would rather be than hearing your love, hearing your love. Amen. There's no place you would rather be than his love. Because in his love, there is peace and there is joy and there is happiness. There is healing and there is deliverance. Hallelujah. There is restoration when you are in his love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 Sister Aisha said it best. There is love, peace joy, deliverance, happiness found in the presence of God. It is such an amazing thing. Nothing to be mournful about, nothing to be sad about, but to be excited to be in the presence of the Lord, to be happy to be in the presence of the Lord because he is a provider, because he is a way maker, because he is an alpha and omega in your life, because he is the beginning and the end. He has all say and reign. Today, I was reminded in Bible study, saints, family, that we have an advocate. 
we have an advocate called the Holy Spirit that was left behind. In John 15, 26, it says, when the advocate comes, who I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And today we are here to worship. We are here to testify. We are here to give praise to our Father who is so great. I wanna give you encouragement, family. I wanna give you encouragement, knowing that your advocate, your daddy, your father, Abba, the one, he is here. He sits high and looks low. And right now I know some of you might be feeling low, but he is looking right at you right now. He is wrapping you in his arms and being the comforter that he promised to be. Heavenly Father, I just want to lift someone up to you today, Father God, that might not be feeling the joy of the Holy Spirit, might not be feeling love, peace. Today, I want to lift them up to you, Father God, and ask that you touch them. Touch them in a way that you have never touched them before, Father God. We ask that you bring them happiness, joy, forbearance in you, Father God. We know that they have been reaching out for your hand, and we know you have been reaching back. But, Father God, wrap them in your comfort today, Father God. We know that as we tarry through the night, that joy comes in the morning, Father God. So I ask that you be that joy in the morning that they need, Father God. Right now, we ask that you reach into the of this home and you have those children feel comforted send someone from the community to be that man that they need father god we ask that you reunify families father god we ask that you bring provisions where there are no provisions right now father god we ask that you begin to press on people's hearts to do your will father god so that those that need can see you father god for your absolute glory father god we thank you right now for being able to press in your presence father god we thank you right now for being able to worship and celebrate your greatness father god we thank you for those that you have given breath on this morning to get up worship praise you teach and preach father god we thank you for that we honor you for that father god and we know that you will not leave us without the peace that you have promised father god so on today we worship you we worship you to break chains we worship you to bring everything into this atmosphere that you intend for this day father god and we thank you on today for that we magnify your name on today father god we uplift you on today father god we call out to you father god because we know that you will answer father god and we thank you on today for that hallelujah to your name father god Glory to your name, Father God. We bless you right now, Father God. We praise you and we honor you. We lift you up in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Yes, the world. Yes, the world. will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? We can praise you now. In
We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? We can praise you now in victory. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Oh, we will sing hallelujah until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. We will sing hallelujah. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. <clears throat> we'll dance in your presence. Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Sing hallelujah. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. Yes, we'll dance in your presence. Yes, we'll dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. King of glory, fill this place. We just want to be with you. We just want to be with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Feel this place, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not just this physical place, but this place in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls, Lord. Oh, we just want to be with you, God. We just want to be one with you, God. We just want to be in your presence, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We will sing hallelujah until you come again. Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Oh, we will sing hallelujah until you come again. Oh. Yes, we'll dance in your presence until you come again. We will sing hallelujah. 
We just want to be with you, Lord God. God, we just want to dance in your presence, Lord God. Until you come again, Lord God, we want to be like David, God. But we dance until our clothes come off, Lord God. But we dance until those, those bondages break off, God. Lord, we invite your glory to come in, Lord God. We invite you to come in and heal us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord God. Restore our joy, God. Restore our peace, Lord God. Lord, we ask right now, Lord God, that you, Lord God, have your way, Lord God. You, Lord, you, Lord, have your way, God, and you get the glory, God. I pray, God, that as we study your word, Lord God, that you, Father God, will reveal to us the hidden mysteries of your word, Lord God, that it will be, Lord God, a way of word that will change our lives, Lord God, that will make us stronger, Lord God, that will empower us, Lord God, that will encourage us, Lord God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you are the king of glory. We thank you because you are the king of kings and the Lord of lords, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you do sit high, but you always reach down low, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you understand our pain, that you, Lord God, desire to take our pain, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a comforter, Lord. Now, God, would you have your way, God? Will you continue to move, Lord God, through this virtual space, God? Will you continue to touch? Will you continue to heal and deliver your people today, God? Lord, I decrease, and I ask that you increase in me, God, that you use me for your absolute glory. Lord, and we, Lord, will not forget to give you the honor that is due to you, God. Father, we honor you, we praise you, and we glorify you. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, the people of God ought to be praising him right now. The song says we will dance in his presence until he comes again. Listen, we will sing in his presence until he comes again. 
I don't know about y'all, but I love being in the presence of Jesus because that's where I find my peace and my joy. When I am in his presence, I'm not worried about what's going on in the world. I am worried about being in a relationship with him. I am basking and I am masking in his glorious presence. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like dancing right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel like singing right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. I feel a shout about to go down in the name of Jesus. I praise God for what he's doing. Listen, I'm excited about Jesus. I have already written upon myself that if you don't praise him with me, I will praise him anyhow, because if you knew what he brought me through, what he brought me from, you would be shouting for me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for being just who you are. I thank him that no matter how much I mess up, <laughs> he is steady cleaning me up. Uh -uh, I'm thankful that no matter whether or not I get it right, he still loves me and he still desires me and he still wants me. And for that, that ought to make you dance in his presence. I don't know about y'all, but if y'all can't find a dance and a song in that, I'm going to pray for you because I know that my God, my God, he's always present. Amen. 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 Give God a hand praise. Give him a hand praise. He deserves it, God. If he don't do nothing else for you, he deserves it. He's done just enough to get what he deserves from you. Amen. All right. Listen, I'm excited about God. I'm excited about what he is doing. I'm excited that our God is a God that continues to hold on to us. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I don't feel worthy. Sometimes I, I don't feel worthy for him to hold on to me. I think he ought to let me go. But because we serve the God that we serve, a God of compassion, a God of healing, because we serve a delivering God, he is forever holding on to us. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. That ought to make you shout right there. That, that's a shout right there. That's a Holy Ghost spirit right now. That is God saying, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're feeling, no matter the emotions that you feel are out of control, God says, I am here with you. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. I got you. I got you. I don't know, y'all. Maybe it's just me, but I just, I'm excited about that because I know, I know I'm a filthy rag. I know that I don't deserve him, but I'm glad that he's got me. Listen, I don't want to be before you long. Let's go to Ephesians 2 and 10. Ephesians 2 and 10. I promise you, I'm going to try not to keep you long. I might do that preacher thing and I might say, give me two more minutes about four or five times, but I promise after about the fifth or sixth time, I'm going to let you go. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I, I want to talk to you today as we have been studying, we have been talking about discovering your true identity. And I realize that as we are discovering who we really are, that it can be very painful. Um, when you're discovering who God is calling you to be, when he's revealing the innermost part of you, it can be very painful. It can even look a little bit discouraging. I find that some of us, when we find and we, we start tapping into our true identity, it is kind of liberating, right? I find that when some of us who are tapping into this new identity and understanding who we really are, it's kind of a Woosa moment, right? You you start just woosa like, okay, God, I ain't that bad, right? And and then there's some of us who, when we are finding out who we really are, it becomes a healing and a celebration time. And as we have been studying and and talking and 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 encouraging you through the month of January, that we are discovering our true identity. Now. It's only natural for us to believe that our true identity somehow is connected to our physical DNA. 
and that we somehow connected to our ancestries, our parents, our mom and our daddy, our grandma and our grandpa. It, it, it's, it's not, it's natural for us to begin to think that as we discover our true identity, to look at the things the world says our, our identity should be. Right? It's, it's natural for us to go that way. But I want to, if you would allow me to, if you would give me the space to, I want to talk to you this morning. I want to empower you this morning. I want to encourage you this morning that this new identity, this identity that we want you to discover that God desires for us to discover is not a physical identity. It is your spiritual DNA. As we are discovering our spiritual DNA, God will reveal some things to us that might not look real pretty. And so we tend to shy away from the things <clears throat> that God has placed inside of us. We tend to shy away from what God is trying to reveal to us because somehow in our minds we have made it feel ugly. We, we have said that our flaws we have said that the things that don't line up with the, what the world says it should look like somehow are distasteful when it comes to God. But yet we find in this scripture that Paul tells us something totally different. I, I want to share with you this morning, if, I would, if you would not uh, mind, if you would just give me the opportunity, I want to share with you this morning, I want to give you what Paul has given us in this scripture. I want you to know that you are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. Uh, I, I was reading some background on, on, on what a masterpiece is, and, and I was really taken back by some of the things that they describe a masterpiece to be. When, when he talks about a, a real artist, it says what an artist does is he first has to get in touch with who he is. He, he has to come to a place of understanding that everything that is in him is what's going to come out on the canvas. So a true masterpiece is something that has been developed through the scars and the pains, through the discomforts, through the, the, um, the dissatisfaction, through the ups and the downs of the artist's life. It is literally his picture through his lenses of what it is that encompasses his life. What makes it a masterpiece is that it is a one of a kind thing. But what makes it a masterpiece is that nobody can go back and reinvent it. What makes it a masterpiece is that it lasts from generation to generation. <clears throat> what makes it a masterpiece is that it's something inside the emotion of the painting, the painting that the artist has done, that you forget about the artist and your focus is on the, the uniqueness of the painting. So as I thought about this, as I went and I did this, I said, my God, today, Lord, that describes <coughs> your people. I want to talk to you about being God's masterpiece. I understand that the times that we're in, I understand that some of us have a mental challenge where we're battling in our minds. I, I just want to put this thing out there. We keep trying to give the enemies too much credit. Some of the battle that's going on is the enemy that is in our mind. David talks a lot about it. David, when he talks about help me with my enemies, he's not talking about a physical enemy. He is talking about the enemy that he is struggling in his mind. And sometimes what is happening to us is that we are hearing all of the negative things. We are saying, uh, we are reminding ourselves of our past. We are telling ourselves that we don't have what it takes, that some how that we are not qualified to be used as a masterpiece of Christ. But when we look at this scripture, when we look at this passage, Paul paints a different script. Um, um, he paints a different picture of what a masterpiece really is. So when I thought about it and I said, well, God, how, how, how does this, how, how does this line up 
with our lives? How, how, what does this have to do with us? Well, I want you to go with me as we begin to break down this passage. I want you to go with me as we begin to look at what Paul is saying. First of all, understand Paul now again is writing to another church, the church of Ephesus, from the Roman jail. He is writing to them because they are second guessing again who they are. They are they are second guessing themselves because sometimes going through trials and tribulations, it just seems much easier to go with the status quo than to go against it. They were operating in fear and he wanted them to take that fear and turn it into faith. So he was reminding them of who they are. He was reminding them of who they are. Paul was taking this opportunity to let them know how special they were to God. And yes, and it was a time where it was probably sounds a little bit familiar for us right now, but it was a time where the, 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 um, the merchants were getting angry and, and, and the, the false prophets were angry because people were coming to know who they were. And if they came to know who they were, that meant that they weren't going to bow down to the images that they wanted them to bow down to, that they were recognizing and they were coming into their own of finding out that they were a peculiar people, that they are a special people, and that God created them the way that they are. So Paul is talking to the church right now, and he is saying, I want you to stay faithful. I want you to know who you are and who you are. So he gets to the chapter and two. In verse 10, and he begins to break down who they are. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited that I'm a masterpiece, that I am a one of a kind. I don't know if the world can handle too many Lynn Herons, but what I do know that God created me the way he wanted me to be. So the first thing we see here is that Paul says that we are his workmanship. Workmanship is actually translated, we are his work of art. Yeah, y'all see that? Yeah, yeah. You are God's work of art. Well, what does that mean? That means that God made you just how he wanted you. He made you just how he wanted you. He didn't make you to make other people feel good. He made you just how he wanted you to. He gave you the color eyes he wanted you to have. He gave you the, nap, the hair that he wanted you to have. He gave you the skin tone that he wanted you to have. He gave you the height that he wanted you to have. Although I wear six inch heels to make me look taller, but he made me 5'3". He gave you the body that he gave you. Some of us is fat, some of us is skinny, some of us don't know what we are. He made you just how he wanted you to be. Paul says, you're not a mistake. God intentionally, he intentionally created you as his masterpiece. Another translation for this is when, when we talk about his work of art, it also says, a definition says that we are the master's work. We, we are the master's work. Don't that make y'all excited? Doesn't it make you excited to know that God made you just the way he made you? He made you to have a voice or no voice. He made you to articulate or not articulate. God made you just how he you, um, you are. You don't have to make your outer appearance appeal to anybody else. Why? Because you are made in the image of God. He, you, you are his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. Genesis 1 and 26 tells us that we are created in the image of God and that we are also in their likeness. What does this mean? That means that God created us after his image. Let me tell you something. When you start doubting who you are in God, you are challenging who Christ is. Christ says you are wonderfully made. You are a creation. You are a masterpiece. Why? Because you are made after his image. When people see you, they see an image of God. They see a vision of who God is. He says, you have been made 
in the image of God. I don't know. I know y'all ain't excited about that because y'all want me to shout right now. But I'm trying to tell you, this is some shouting material to know that you are God's workmanship, that you don't have to be sad. You don't have to be pitiful about who you are. God created you who you are and be okay with that. Why? Why do you say that, Pastor? <clears throat> because Proverbs 1 and 39 says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He made you that way. Why? Because he wants you to know that you are his greatest creation. Listen, let me tell you, there is nothing else on the earth that he says has been created in his image. Only you, only man has been created in the image of God. And because of that, we ought to feel special. We are his masterpiece. We are his masterpiece. He intentionally created you to go through the experiences in life that you're going through. He intentionally created you to handle the good and the bad that you've experienced. He has cre intentionally created you to weather the storms. Listen, he has intentionally created you to go from generation to generation to generation. He has intentionally created you that people will be talking about you from years to come. He has created you the way you are because he is using you to impact the world. It, it may not be the way you want it to be, but he says, I created you in my image so that people will know who you are because you are created in my image. Proverbs says that you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. There is a song I heard and, um, it says, I am who I am says that I am because he tells me who I am. He says, there is a new name written down in glory and it's my name. I am is the author of my story. Listen, guys, you are who God says you are. And he says that you are his masterpiece, that you are created fearfully and you are created wonderfully. You are not a mistake. I don't care what the world tells you. I don't care what your past has been like. God says he created you because he knew that you can endure that. Do not allow your, the enemy of your mind to tell you that you are anything other than who God created you to be. You are his masterpiece. The second thing he says is that because you know that you are a masterpiece, he goes on to say that you are also created in Christ Jesus to good for good works. So people look at this particular passage and they go back to the previous scriptures, eight and nine, and they say, well, Paul, this is kind of an oxymoron, Paul. This is kind of a contradictory of what you've said previously. Previously, you told us don't boast because it's not our works, right? Previously, you said that our faith is because of the grace of God, right? Previously, you said to us to remember that everything that we've overcome, everything that we've gone through, everything that we've done in life has nothing to do with you. Previously, you said that is not our works that forms a relationship with God. It is not our works that gives us salvation. It is not our works that gives us grace. This is previously, Paul, what you're saying does not match what you're saying right now. But let me tell you what Paul is really saying. What Paul is really saying right here, he is not saying that you have to work for your salvation. He is not saying that you have to work for the grace of God. He is not saying that your faith comes by your works. What he is saying, because you know who you are now, because you realize who you are now, because you have accepted that you are a masterpiece of God, because you know where your faith stands, because you know who you are in relationship with he said that shall compel you to do good works that should compel it should make you want to use your giftings for the kingdom of god because you know that he gave his life for you because you know that he called you for such a time as this because you know that you were chosen by him he says that should compel you to good works so there's a difference in trying to work for something than 
being compelled to good works. So when you look at this particular scripture and you go back to verses eight and nine, what he tells us is that this, this gift that we have, this, this gift of grace, this gift of salvation comes from God. And because it is a gift, because he has gifted us with this stuff, then we then build our faith on the giftings that he has given us. Now, let me just say this to you. He is not saying, the reason he says that we can't work for it is because a gift is not a gift if we have to work for it. If we have to work for it to receive a gift, then it becomes a payment, not a gift. And God is saying that my gift of grace, my gift of salvation is free unto you. And because it's free unto you, you can build your faith. And as you build your faith and you trust in me, then what you should be doing is being compelled to do good works. Your heart, your love for God should say, I want to walk in the giftings that you've given me. And my desire is to build your kingdom. And my desire is to share the message of Jesus Christ. And my desire is to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to know the salvation of the Lord, that everybody has an opportunity to experience the love of the Lord. If you are one who really has come into knowing who you are in Christ, you should be compelled to good works. You should want to do good. You, you should want to share your giftings. You should want to build your family. You, you should want to. Matthew 5 and 16 says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. What does that mean? That means that we should be living our life in such a way that we should be sharing our giftings in such a way that it is a light that shines upon us and that people know that it is God that is working through us. And see, when people, when you come in contact with people and you are, you shouldn't have to say, I'm saved filled with the Holy Ghost and sanctified. You shouldn't have to say that. They should know by your life. He says that you should. You can tell a tree by the fruit it bears, right? They should know that by your life, by the way you talk, by the way you walk, by the way you live, that you are a child of God. If you've got to tell people when you walk into the room that you are a Christian and you are not acting like the light of God, you should be able to walk into the room and people should know automatically that you are the seed of the most high God. They ought to know automatically that you are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They ought to know automatically that you are one who encompasses the love of God. If you have to walk into the room and remind people who you are, then you are not acting as the light of Jesus Christ. Paul says, Matthew says, I'm sorry, that if you let your light shine, if you live your life According to the will of God, he says that people will know the works that God is doing through you. If I'm living according to what God tells me to do, I don't have to make you open up a door for me. If I'm living the way I'm supposed to be living, if I'm living righteously, I don't have to kick in the door and say I've been called. He says your gifts will make room for you. Why? Because if you live in the authority that God has given you, if you live off the will that God has placed in your life, if you are one who is compelled to live righteously, he said that people will know you by the fruit you bear. And you won't get the glory, but I'll get the glory because they'll know that it is the fruit that comes from me. He says that we must be compelled to do good works. Listen, guys. It's not enough to just know that you are a masterpiece, that you are one of a kind. But if you ain't doing nothing with it, it's just a picture. If you're not displaying so the world can see, it's just another picture. If you're, you're not coming to a place where you are saying, God, use my life that others may see your grace and your mercy, that others may see the realness of your salvation and your love. It's just another picture. God said you are his workmanship. And because you are created new in him, you should be compelled to good works. My last point is, and I promise y'all, my last point, give me five more minutes, and I promise you that's my first one. I still got four left. Give me five more minutes and I'm going to be out of your way. The last thing that Paul brings here, he says, which God prepared beforehand 
that you should walk in them. Y'all, do you see that? Which God prepared beforehand. Now, not after you come into knowing who you are, right? Not after you say, okay, God, I received that I'm a masterpiece. Not after, he says, beforehand that you should walk in them. What, what does that mean, Pastor? The wonderful thing about being a masterpiece, the wonderful thing about our love for God compelling us to good works is that he has already prepared the work for us. He, he has already pre-prepared the work for us. We don't have to wait for him to do it. We, we don't have to sit around and read a book until he gets it done. We don't have to sit around and pray and pray and pray until he gets it done. He says, it has already been prepared for you beforehand. Here's the trick. Here's the thing. You have to make the decision to walk in it. You, you have to make the decision to walk in it. So I, I was thinking, um, I, I thought about a time when um, I used my kids, they know I used to... Um, have a problem with growing older, right? And 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 so I, I would oftentimes people would ask me how old I am, and I would say, Oh, I'm 25, right? Because it was something about getting older I really did not want to tap into, right? I, I felt like I wasn't ready to walk into the older land, right? I, I was happy being a young adult land. And and so um one day my son, we were talking and and um I, a friend was around and he was asking my son how old he was. And my son said he was 25. And so my friend said, well, how he 25 and you 25 if he is your son? And I realized at that moment, first of all, getting noticed in head of the boat, I can't change it. It's going to be there. God has already prepared my way to age, right? He's already opened up that door for me to age. So it's something that's going to happen whether I want it to happen or not. But I realized at that time that I couldn't walk into the fullness of who God called me to be until I made the decision to walk in it. So as long as I made a decision to lie about who I was, the long as I made a decision to stay where I was, I would never witness I would never um, have the fullness of who God called me to be. I would never walk in the fullness of the anointing on my life. I would never walk out the fullness of the giftings in my life because I was trying to stay stuck at 25 where I didn't have to make no real decisions, where I could just be all loose. I could do what I wanted to do. And God was saying, no, you can't stay there. I've already prepared something for you and I need you to walk into it. Listen, you have to understand God has prepared a way for you, but until you make a decision to walk into it, it's just a, a, a prepared way. It's just waiting for you. It is just a gift that is unused. It is a way that has not been tapped into. He says, I prepared it, but you've got to walk into it. I didn't say that. That's what Paul says. Paul says, God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. He's already opened up the door. He's already prepared the job, but you don't have the job because you won't walk into it. He's already prepared the ministry, but you can't be in ministry because you won't walk into it. He's already opened up the door, but you refuse to walk through the door. He's already made a way, but you refuse to acknowledge it. He's already wrote the book. But do we see and refuse to put the pen to the paper? He's already established you, but you must make a decision to walk in it. You, you can have a call on your life, but if you ain't walking at all, it's just a call. You can have a ministry in your life, but if you ain't doing nothing with it, it's just a ministry. You can have a book in you, but if you ain't doing nothing, I know, I know I'm talking to myself, but if you ain't doing nothing with it, it's just words that's inside of you. You have a business. God said, I've already prepared it for you. All you got to do is walk in it. The problem is, is we allow our minds to tell us that we are incapable. We allow our minds to tell us that we don't have what it takes. And it can't be for me. It must be for somebody else. And yet Paul says that when you realize that you are a child of God, that you were formed and you were made special for the glory of God, when you realize that and you're compelled to do good works, it's not enough to just be compelled. You got to now walk in it. You got to walk in it. 
It's time to stop talking, y'all. It's time to stop playing. God says that he has already prepared a way. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, in Exodus 23 and 20, he says, see, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and bring you to and bring you to the place I have prepared. Not only has he prepared a place, but he's already debat, dispatched the angels to watch over you and to guard you as you walk into this place God is calling you to walk into. He's prepared it. You've got to make the decision to walk in it. He goes on in Jeremiah 1 and 5. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Listen, you have been called to do what God called you to do. Before you was given in your mama's belly, he had already ordained you to the nations. He had already called you a prophet. He had already called you a worship leader. He had already called you a pastor. He has already called you a preacher. He has already called you an evangelist. He says, I've already called you. You are ordained to do it. You just got to walk in it. You got to walk in it. Romans 29 and 30. It says, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and those whom he predestined, he called. So he didn't just predestine you before you was called in your mama's womb, but he called you. And all those whom he called, he justifies. And those he justifies, he also glorifies. Listen, guys, we have been called to walk in this earth as the masterpieces of Jesus Christ. Our lives should cause awe to people that we come in contact with. People ought to know you by the fruit you bear. But let me tell you, if you are a tree and you are not bearing no tree, no fruit, the Bible says you must be cut down. He has opened up a way. He has prepared a way. He has given us every opportunity for us to walk in the image of Christ, for us to walk in who he has called us to walk. But you must make a decision today that you're going to walk in what God called you to walk in. I know, I know, I know it's scary. I know it's going to cause you to have to be shook up, right? It's going to cause you to have to give up some stuff. I, I know I don't like to give up things either. I love my fruit snacks, but I know I ain't gonna lose no weight if I keep eating fruit snacks. I, I love my fruit snacks. I, I can eat a whole box of them by myself, but I know that I can't lose this weight. I can't complain about gaining weight if I won't give up the fruit snacks. He said, I know, I know that you're apprehensive. I know that you have fear, but I want you to choose faith over fear. I, I, I want you to choose holiness over unholiness. I want you to choose righteousness over unrighteousness. And I want you to know that I have called you. I have prepared you. I have already paved the way for you to do what I've called you to do. But you've got to make the decision. Paul says, he, yeah, he made the way. He prepared it beforehand. He says, but you have to walk in it. What is God calling you to do? What is God pressing on your heart to do? What, what are you fighting? But what is God staring up in your spirit, man, that you keep trying to run away from? God says, I've already pre-prepared the way for you. You must make a decision to walk in it. Give me five more minutes, y'all. Give me five more minutes. I got three more. I got three more. Yeah, so that's a small, my second five minutes. I got three more. But I, what I want you to leave today with remembering that God made you just how he wanted you. And that as you realize that you are his masterpiece, that that should result and compel you to good works. Last thing I want to leave with you is that the work that God has called you to, he said he's already prepared a place. He's already prepared an opportunity. He's already opened up the door. He's already made a way. The steps of a righteous man is ordered by the Lord. He says, you got to walk into it. You got to make a decision. to Walk out this thing that God has called you to. Father, we thank you right now, God, 
We thank you, Lord, that you have called us your masterpiece, that you have made us special. You have made us individual, Lord God, and we are unique. There is no one else like us, God. And we thank you. But Lord, I pray right now that as we come to a place of understanding who we are and whose we are and how unique we are, Lord God, as we come to a place of walking in this new creation, God, this new created person, this new created identity that you have given us in you, I pray, God, that it will compel us, that it will be the result of moving us into good works. But Lord, I know that Although it should compel us, and although, God, it should result in good works, Lord, if we don't walk in it, Lord God, it's just being compelled. It's nothing. Would you stir up something in us, God? Would you put a pulling on us, God? Would you give us the boldness and the strength to walk into this thing that you are calling us to walk into? It's scary, God. Is bigger than anything that we've ever imagined, God. We don't have the finances. We don't have the skill set, God. But we trust that you've already prepared that for us, God. So would you give us the faith to step into it, to walk into it, to trust that you will order our steps. Father, we thank you right now, God. We thank you for what you're doing. And we thank you that we have not even tapped in yet, God, to what you're doing. You said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of man what you have planned. But God, would you give us the faith to trust even that? Help us with our unbelief, God, that we may make a decision to walk in the giftings that you have called us to. We thank you, God. And we praise you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Five more minutes, y'all. I promise you. Five more minutes. I still got two left. I still got some time to talk. Uh, five more minutes. Listen, you may not know God for yourself. And you may have believed what the world is telling you, what your past is telling you, is that you are just the painting. No, you are God's masterpiece. And he wants to hang you in his gallery. And if you don't know that for yourself, listen, we want to talk with you about how you can be displayed in the gallery of Jesus Christ. We want to share with you how you could just profess it and believe it in your heart that he has died, that he died for you so that you might live life more abundantly, that you might be saved. We have ministers who want to walk you through that process. Maybe you have been struggling a fence and your past has been dictating to you that you have messed up so much that you can never be a masterpiece in God's kingdom. Listen, I'm telling you, Paul says that you are his masterpiece. And God says that we, he is just to forgive us if we ask us for forgiveness. He will forgiveness and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means he will make us righteous. He will bring us back into a right standing relationship with him. If you've been struggling offense and you say, I'm ready to be in a righteous relationship with God again. We have ministers who want to walk you through that process. Maybe you just need prayer. You said, I'm struggling. I'm just struggling. This world is crazy. Everything I'm going through in my life is so upside down. I can't even think straight for myself. We have ministers who want to pray with you. We don't want to tell you want to pray. We don't want to subliminally put a message in your mind about what to pray. But what we want to do is pray God's will for your life. That you will come to know that you are his masterpiece no matter what you do. It will never change that he calls you his masterpiece. We have ministers who want to pray with you. Or if you're just looking for a crazy bunch of people that you want to be connected to, listen. New creation, as far as I'm concerned, again, is the best church on this side of the land. I love these men and women of God. 
They are men and women who will love you, who will hold you accountable. They will get in the trenches with you. They will walk with you. They will stretch you, but they will also hold you accountable and they will also admonish you when you need to be admonished. They are ones who will live life with you. You know, we have been told we're like leeches. What we hold on to you, we don't let go. Listen, I am excited about being a part of this family and I want to extend that same opportunity for you. We don't have membership. We do family. We do family and we invite you to be a part of our family. If you want to have a relationship with God, you want to come back into a righteous standing with God, you just want prayer or you're looking for a crazy bunch of people to be connected to. We have ministers who want to connect with you. We have ministers who want to walk you through those processes. How do you do that? Well, first of all, you can inbox us or you can put it down in the comments below or you can call us at 916-949-9019. One more time, you can inbox us, you can put it in the comments below or you can call us, wait, call, you can call us at 916-949-9019. Listen, guys, you are God's masterpiece. Don't just be compelled to be, to do good works, but walk in the place God has already prepared for you. God loves you and that is never gonna change. And so do we, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Lynn, my queen was on fire today. I called the Pharaoh's fire department. They should be here in a minute. But then I thought about the Ohio players with fire. But anyway, but a great word. So I thank you for it. But this is an opportunity and time where we all get to participate. This is a time for our tithes and offering. Our tithes and offering. You can give whoop, whoop, whoop. I wanna really, really thank all of you, all of the New Creation family and those who are, are connected to us and, and those who we don't know who have been sowing into the ministry. We thank you greatly. And trust me when I say these monies are being used to continue to edify the kingdom. Even in these times, we have a creative team to where we have unique opportunities to still be able to go out and impact the community. And so we thank you for all of what you do um, and we ask that you continue to sow into us. And so we thank you in advance. And so for all you um, techie savvy type, here's how you can uh, do your offering and tithes. You can do Venmo at ncc-arden. Look for Pastor Lynn's face. That's again, that's Venmo at ncc-arden. Or if you old school and want to mail in a check, the money order, our cashier's check, you can do P.O. Box 60761, Sacramento 95860-0761. Again, that's P.O. Box 60761, Sacramento, California 95860-0761. And then you can look in the comment section. I believe it will be written down if you didn't have a pen available. But again, we thank you for sowing into the ministry. And I want to leave you with a word before we pray out. And, and it's in line with what Pastor Lynn said. It's just a question. Are you a pitcher? Are you a one-of-a-kind masterpiece? Because our daddy made us to be a masterpiece. And after that, go to get you a picture frame for that masterpiece. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We love you. We thank you for the anointed word that went forth today with power and accuracy. We thank you for the praise team allowing the Holy Spirit to use them mightily today, the powerful prayer, the giving, and all of what took place, God. And so we thank you in advance that someone will be blessed, that someone will reconcile, someone will re receive and move on the call on their life today. And so we thank you, God. And we just ask that you replenish all that was put out and so we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, New Creation Church, Facebook family, we love you guys. Peace.